Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, I want to go ahead and talk about a design choice about the C++ language. And in fact, it was sort of inherited from C, so there wasn't much of a choice to be made. But that's this idea that C++, whenever we create a type, have a function argument, or create a function itself, meaning the return type and its arguments itself, all have a specific static data type, meaning that we assign the actual type of information that's going to be stored in a particular variable, function argument, or the return type from a function. So this is actually a really important design decision for C++. In fact, it's one of the things that allows language to scale when you write really, really big pieces of software. I'm thinking hundreds of thousands or millions of lines of code. And the reason is that this sort of type safety or these guarantees about what the type's actually going to be can be really important when it comes to debugging and just making more reliable software. Now, that said, sometimes we do need to sort of massage or change the data a little bit so that we can get the right result that we want. And there are mechanisms to do this, and that's called casting. So when we want to cast or treat a set of bits as a certain data type, that's called casting. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example so I can help motivate casting. And we'll have to look at a few of the different features over a series of videos, but this is the first one and an introduction to the idea of casting. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of an example here. And I know I have some mathematicians watching here who can compute this, but let's go ahead and just use C++ to do 7 divided by 5 here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this program. Let's go ahead and compile it. Again, I'll use C++ 20, but this is really an old feature that's always been in the language here. And the program's compiled. Now, before I run this, just to show you a few other things that I've included here that I don't believe I've talked about in this series, uh, I want to see the precision of this answer to six decimal uh, places here. So that's what these commands are doing, and they're part of the IO manip uh, header. Because, well, seven divided by five, at least if my math's correct, should be some sort of decimal value. So let's go ahead and compute it. And I get a one here. Okay, so what happened here? So seven divided by five, last time I checked is not equal to one here. So something has gone wrong. Well, let's go ahead and think about this a little bit from the computer's perspective. Seven itself is going to be a long data type or some sort of integer and five as well. So I can go ahead and just label those as longs here. So what happens when we do seven divided by five? Well, the stuff after the decimal point just gets truncated and is removed. So thus we're left with the answer of one. So in order to get the answer that we want here, we need to cast seven and five to some sort of data representation that the computer will actually understand. And that means that we're gonna to need to use some sort of floating point. So a float or a double, for instance, is what our tools in C++. So let's go ahead and cast each of these values here by putting in parentheses the type that we wanna treat the data here. So I'll put a float here and a float in front of the five. And let's go ahead and recompile, rerun, and much better here. We're getting 1.400000 and so on. So again, this is called casting. Now, there is one redundant cast here. I could actually get rid of one of these here. And let's go ahead and recompile the program, rerun it just to show you that we get the same result here. Because now what's happening when I do the cast here, and I'll go ahead and write float in front of our seven divided by five, is this five will actually get promoted so that it can be treated as a floating point value. And then we get the equivalent of what I had previously. So we're dividing two floats by each other and we can store that decimal value of 1.4 exactly. All right, so this is sort of interesting that we had this sort of uh, upgrade or type promotion happen. And this can happen with our built-in data types. Okay, so we sort of call this a promotion and this cast here, in a way is implicit, meaning that it automatically occurred. Okay, let's go ahead and look at a few more examples to see what we mean when there's implicit conversions that are formed. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, let's just go ahead and uh, get rid of this uh, example here. And what I wanna do here is just do something like int result equals uh, five here. And then let's go ahead and create something else, something like a char. And I'll just call this uh, C here and set it equal to results. And then I'll go ahead and just print out C here. 
So if I go ahead and run this program, let's go ahead and compile it. Let's go ahead and run it. And well, this probably isn't the greatest example. Let's go ahead and do um, a, a type that's a little bit um, bigger here. How about a short? There we go. And let's go ahead and try this out. Okay, so we do get five here. I'll talk about the char example in one moment um, because that's actually another interesting one. So I'm gonna uh, leave that in here. But what happened here is kind of interesting because, well, an integer and a short are two different data types. Now, how different are they actually? So what I wanna do here is actually just do uh, size of result. And let's go ahead and copy this again. And let's go ahead and do size of uh, C here, our short here. Okay, and I'll go ahead and compile this. And we can see that the size in terms of bytes of this integer is four and the size of our short is two. Okay, so that seems fine here. Now let's go ahead and increase this result to something bigger though. I don't know, something like 50,000. I'll go ahead and try to compile this and run it. And something really weird has happened here. I have negative 15,536, which is certainly not 50,000 here. So this is where we have to be a little bit careful with how we are converting or storing numbers. In fact, I could get the same sort of problem to happen without creating this here, but instead by just saying, hey, treat this uh, value here, result, as a, a short here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get rid of this. So again, doing the same style casting that I was doing, recompiling, rerunning, and again, I get the same value. But let me go ahead and just leave these uh, back here um, so you can see the result here. Now, the problem, as you can imagine, is for an integer, if I have four bytes of information here, so let's just go ahead and do uh, result. And let me go ahead and just give us a little bit more space here. And each of these boxes are uh, one byte here. And then for the value C here, I only have two bytes of information. So you can imagine 50,000 being a really big value that takes up, you know, some portion here of these boxes. Maybe, you know, this amount here for our integer. In fact, it's, you know, just over maybe the halfway point of two bytes here. But if I'm trying to cast and fill in this data here, we can see that it actually overflows what we can store here. So in this case, this isn't really a safe type of cast. We're losing information. So that's one thing we have to be aware of when we are actually casting different data types. Do we have enough bytes to, well, fill that data in? The other thing that we have to also be careful about is the sign. So let's go ahead and retry this example, but I'm gonna treat this as a unsigned short. So let's go ahead and rerun this. I'll recompile. And this time it does work. So this time, since I'm using the unsigned version, again, I get another uh, larger range of numbers from my short here at zero to 65,000 something. Well, 50,000 will actually fit here. So this is actually okay. We've preserved the actual value here. So as long as I have, again, enough space here, I can do that. But again, I do have to be especially careful if I'm converting or doing this casting with things that can store uh, positive values or, or I should say signed or unsigned values. OK, so that's the takeaway there. Now, let's go ahead and back up a little bit to where I made a little bit of a tiny mistake earlier, but something that I wanted to show you here. So let's go ahead and change this back to a character here and some value like five and then just go ahead and print this out. And this is a mistake that I make all the time, as you saw, and that I also see other folks make all the time here. So again, I'm gonna compile this and run it, and we don't see anything. Like we were seeing five printed out here. And we say, hmm, well, maybe that's an issue of the representation. What if I make this a unsigned chart here? And again, I try to run it and nothing here. Okay, well, what's actually going on here? Well, within this C out statement, we're saying, hey, print out unsigned char here, C, which is result here. And I think it is storing five. In fact, I can show you in GDB that it, it is. But when we're actually printing it out, we're treating this as a character. And for those of you who aren't aware, because I don't think we've talked about it on this series, if you Google for something called the ASCII table, if you didn't know, different integer values, and I'll go ahead and click on this table so you can see represent the actual characters that we print out here. So let's go ahead and see what five is in decimal here. And decimal five is 
inquiry, which, you know, I have no idea what that is as far as the character that's supposed to print out. So let's go ahead and try out something here that we might recognize. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try out one of our alphabetical characters here. How about 65? And let's go ahead and save this, recompile, rerun, and now we get the letter A here. So were we expecting 65? Were we expecting A? Well, if C's type, again, because we have treated the value here as unsigned char, that's how we're telling the computer to treat our actual value here, it's going to print out A. Now, this is where we can use our cast to say, no, 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 we actually want the integer representation. So we could use a type like a short, for instance. Most of the time I see folks use something like an int like this here. So let's go ahead and just uh, compile it here. And now we can go ahead and see 65 if we're trying to print this out and debug it. Now we actually do have things such as um, other fixed width types here. If I wanted to do int 8 underscore t, some of you folks might do that. And I think I'm going to do a separate video on those different uh, integer types that we could use that might be a little bit more appropriate. Uh, but now you know how to do this with casting here. So let me go ahead and wrap us up here and just talk about or recap some of the things that we discussed here. So again, we have to be careful when we are doing this sort of cast here to make sure that when we're casting, we're casting to a type that's bigger or big enough for our actual value. So we saw an example with that previously. And then if we're doing some sort of computation, we have to also, again, be careful to make sure that we're getting the result as part of our uh, answer here for the right type here, meaning that if we want a decimal type here. Now, some of the primitive types themselves will be implicitly converted. So that is allowed. And we've even seen a few examples here that these conversions are allowed. But again, we have to be very careful. So I typically like to put the cast in front of the actual type here. This is what's known as a C style cast here. So I'll go ahead and write it out. C style cast. And that's exactly what we're seeing right here. Now, again, we'll talk about in future videos different ways to cast. But again, keep in mind this cast is happening at runtime and it's telling us how we want to represent or interpret these specific bits. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that lesson on casting. It's kind of a fun thing, but it also kind of shows just some of the, the power of the C++ language, this idea for us to sort of yield the individual bits and tell how we are going to treat them for our computations that we're performing. So I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure that you give it a big thumbs up if you did. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see some other videos because I'm going to be talking about casting in a little bit of a series because there's lots of different ways to cast and we'll get into the modern C++ way of doing that with things like... Um, dynamic cast, static cast, and even reinterpret cast or const cast. I'll show all of those. So with that said, folks, thanks for your time, and we'll see you in the next lesson.